In this chapter, we'll be learning setting up master data for overhead management. Setting up key components of master data. Cost elements, cost centers, activity type, statistical key figures, internal order, and groups. This master data help us to report appropriately, improved quality care, consistent reporting, and cost efficiency. So setting a master data plays a key and important role on overhead management. Cost element. A cost element classifies the organization's valued consumption of production factors within a controlling area. There are two types of cost element, primary element and secondary element. Cost that originates outside the company relates directly to the income statement in FI and must be included in FI chart of account. What does that mean? Any expense account on our profit and loss account should be created as a primary cost element. Secondary element. Cost that results from internal allocation activities, no relation to GL accounts in FI. These accounts are exclusively for cost accounting and are only maintained in CO, that is controlling. So secondary element does not have any direct relationship with our financial reporting, that is our profit and loss account. We'll see in the next chart what's the difference between cost element and GL account. If you see in the left, chart of account consists of balance sheet accounts, adjustment accounts, and income sheet accounts. That includes revenue and expenses, which is like we use for account receivable, fixed asset, treasury, and etc. On the right hand side, we see controlling like internal orders, product costing, profitability analysis, cost center accounting. Here we see cost elements on the right side, which primary cost element, which is directly relevant to income state accounts, and secondary cost elements. Remember, primary cost elements are linked to income statement, that is, all expenses account are primary cost element. No balance sheet account in controlling. Balance sheet accounts only for financial accounting and reporting, where we report to various authorities like stock market and publishing our report to shareholders and etc. Whereas in secondary cost element, they don't have anything in financial accounting. Here we plan, for example, within our organization, if there is two departments and we have some cost planning, cost sharing, we don't show outside like what are the things we plan internally. So that's where we use secondary cost elements. If you see this chart, in controlling, there is two type of cost elements as we discussed, secondary and primary. And in financial accounting, if you see in income statement, we see two types of account, revenue accounts, where, where we will record all our sales and income. And we have another account which has expense account, where we'll record all our expenses. So primary cost elements are those expense account in FI. So that is one-to-one -one mapping usually happens. Obviously there is special circumstances where we may have different cost elements mapped to a different account. Let's see next cost center accounting. Cost center is an organizational unit within a controlling area that represents a defined location of cost incurred. The definition can be based on functional requirements, allocation criteria, physical location, responsibility for cost. So cost center, based on the company's requirement, we can have various ways to create cost center. We can say, okay, sales department is one cost center. Or we can say a sales division may be a cost center. Or we can define a function area, for example, engineers, a cost center category. So it can be defined in based of various criteria, depend upon how companies wanted their cost to be reported. It also defines the smallest area of responsibility within the company that causes and influence the cost, the lowest level to which you can meaningfully assign direct or indirect cost. What does that mean? For example, if a company has a $1,000 of costing or budget for marketing. 
So that might be marketing for different products company want to track like product A or product B or product C how many each of them have expenses. So based on that they wanted to create cost center either by allocation criteria or functional requirement or responsibility for the cost. This is a standard hierarchy how it looks like. If you see there is, there is a group then there is companies like four companies within the companies there, there are multiple functional areas then on those areas further we define cost centers for that functional area but it can be different ways it can be division departments as I said this is just an example so those cost centers are cost objects like directly we record cost on those cost centers for example here production common plant finance department HR so all those cost centers we record directly. So those are called cost subjects. Activity type. Unit in controlling area that classifies the activities performed in a cost center. Example, labor hours, machine hours, product, production cost center, used in activity allocation processes. The activity type is used in this case for controlling specific activities and can be for one or more cost centers. In an internal activity allocation, the quantity of the activity such as number of consulting hours is entered into SAP system, manually or automatically. The system calculates the associate cost based on activity price and generates a debit to the receiver and a credit to the sender for both the quantity and cost. The internal activity allocation is carried out using secondary cost element which are stored as default types in activity type master. So any internal activity for example we have $2000 posted in FI for example we have expenses of utility bill for a building and that is recorded against a general ledger account in finance but that utility bill does not have to post to a particular cost center. Maybe that building used by four departments, sales, marketing, HR, and finance. And you wanted that cost of that utility bill to spread across those four departments, not just a, a particular cost center. So you wanted to use as activity type that is, that is utility bill to spend those four departments, whatever way is defined, predefined, maybe if you say 25% each. So those $1,000 of utility bill should be spread across those four departments 250, 250, 250 and 250. So that is called internal activity allocation where we use those $250 will be recorded against a secondary cost element. As we discussed earlier the internal activity allocation is carried out by using secondary cost elements only. So these, these are kind of activities. Statistical key figure. In, a, in SAP we have a statistical key figure called as SKF. This is mainly used to track quantities and values for various operating activities. Designed to be useful in reporting and allocation of cost. Example, headcount in each department to allocate admin related expenses. There are two types of SKFs, fixed and total. Fixed value entered in one month remains static over an year. Total fresh SKF value must be entered each month. So the difference between these are these are like variables like each month you can enter a new value for total category of SKF. If it is fixed you cannot enter it the value has to be static over the period of one year. You can link SKF to logistic information system for populating various data into SKF like actual production, actual machine hours, consumed, etc. Logistic information system used for different vari varieties of ways like reporting actual production data or planning data we can get and link that to our SKF. Internal order. This is used to plan, collect, settle the cost of internal jobs or temporary tasks like marketing, trade affairs, sales campaign, road source, building an asset, etc. Internal orders are categorized as either 
orders used to purely to monitor objects within cost accounting such as advertising training or trade fair orders etc and productive orders that are value added that is orders that can be capitalized such as in house construction of an assembly line etc so this is this is in line with cost center like for example we have an advertising campaign for 2 months so we we, we don't have one specific order over the period where or odds it's not a regular order it's just an advertising campaign so it will be it will be like 2 months so we wanted to use internal order to capture those advertising cost then then there is an option of in, in internal order we can further divert those to post it to cost center we learn those things in later chapters groups groups can be cost center groups cost element groups activity type groups statistical key figure groups internal order groups all those master data we created it can be combined and created as a groups just to have a better reporting for example a management wanted to see overall if they have a companies across continents they wanted to see how the north american hr people performed or what is the cost so they don't they don't want to go each hr companies within the country and go deep down and see how much they spend instead of they wanted to create as a group like america canada mexico others and club it together and represent it as it is a report so you can divide complex groups into manageable sections by separating them into subgroups and you can create and maintain subgroups separately and then combine them in a larger groups so basically for a reporting purpose it helps when you create groups so this is about setting up master data for overhead management the next lecture we'll see the system demo for setting up master data